we're going to go ahead and put the IP address on the interface. IP address 192.168.1.254, 255, 255, 255.0. No shot. Do WR. Just making it quick. Again, but what we did basically, we went inside the interface. We put the IP address. I didn't put a description, but I, I will we, uh, we, we go back into it later. And then I turned it on because by default, all routers interfaces are off. Okay. All right. So let's go back to our PC. All right. Where's our PC? Right here. All right. Uh, right here. And then I'll, I'll get out of the way so you guys can, can see it. All right. So let's go ahead and do the same command. And you see there is SSH minus L, the username and the IP. Let's hit enter. And then the password for SSH, which is Cisco. And now we're inside the router. So our SSH is working and is encrypted. We can do a show, start from there. And boom, we can see all our configurations right from the router. All right, so we got our, this is what I consider our basic administration, really. Putting passwords on the router, naming the router. We know we're going to use DNS. All right, put it on. But in this portion, I'm using DNS just for the simple fact of uh, SSH, okay? I can also configure DNS on there. We don't have a DNS server, but I can configure DNS to when I, when I ping or I telnet, instead of using IP addresses, I will go ahead and I use actual names, okay? But there you see now, if I wouldn't have done SSH, if I wouldn't have done that transport input uh, SSH, I would have been able to telnet. And simply just telnet, the IP address, and boom, you're in there. Well, it's going to ask you for usernames and all that. But again, we want a secure connection. That's the reason we use SSH. We want something secure. We don't want to use telnet, which is in plain text, all right? All right, let's go ahead now. And go into interface, but let's see where we're at in a little PowerPoint. I completely forgot we had a little PowerPoint, as you can see how much. Uh, and again, don't get me wrong, I'm not against PowerPoints, okay? I'm against people that don't know how to use PowerPoints, okay? So we've done user mode, privilege mode, we set the clock, terminal history, we've looked at all the other configurations, and actually, we've already saved uh, our configurations, but we haven't saved our configs to TFTP. So that'll be one of the last things we do here, okay? And again, the reason I'm using that is like it's a guideline. Listen, guys and gals, I'm not against PowerPoint, okay? PowerPoint is a very useful tool to allow people to present information. It is not a book for you to read from, okay? That's why you hear me always say that. And I'm, I'm just using it, as you can see, as a guideline so I don't forget to make sure to tell you what I need to. That's the only reason. That's the only reason. All right, interfaces. Let's bring out another router. Let's bring out... Uh, was it 1841? Yeah, let's bring out another 1841. Now that it needs to be the same. Come on. Now it doesn't need to be the same. Now what we're going to do is, let's bring this, uh, this guy over here. This is the LAN. Now we're going to go create a little wide area network connection. All right, so we need modules. We need modules. All right, let's bring this over here. <laughs> right here, physical. Let's turn it off. Ooh, should we? Have we saved our information? I hope so. Yeah, I'm sure we did. All right, uh, let's, did we? You know what? I don't trust myself. <laughs> Do WR, just in case. Uh, turn it off. All right, we're gonna put in, let's use the WIC 1T, and let's just put that bad boy right in there, and let's turn it on again. All right, so we took one of the slots, WIC 1T, and let's close that, and let's open this, Bring it over here so you guys can see it. Let's turn it off, turn it off, and whoop, another wig warranty, put it in there. Turn that, turn that, okay. Let's go ahead in here. All right, let's go to the CLI. And this would be uh, LDS, and then Cisco. Now, Maximize this real quick. Let's take a look at some commands first, because then we got some serials. Let's see. 
Let's look at a summary of our interfaces. Show IP in brief. So now we have F00, which is configured with an IP address, says up, up. We put in a serial. See what it says there? Serial 0 slash 1 slash 0. It's unassigned. It's down, down. OK? I don't know why it's down, down. It should be administratively down, but OK. Down, down. All right, now, but take a look at the way it is. If you had a 2500 series router, OK, which is the ones I told you at the early, earlier, there's the ones that I started with, OK? They're fixed routers. Fixed routers, you just have a port. S0, S1, F0, OK? Here, you have router 0, slot 1, port 0. Over here with the fast Ethernet, slot 0, port 1. And this would have been a 2600 router, it would have been serial 0, 1, slot and port. OK, we're here is router slot and port. That's what that means. And believe me, there's other routers that have a lot longer uh, slashes, I'll call it, all right, designations, OK? So just so you know. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put an IP address on here. But before we do, we got to decide, hey, listen, routers serial interfaces are DTE, data terminating equipment. They really don't pass information along, OK? So we need to set one of these serials interfaces we, as a DCE, a data communications equipment. We need to provide some sort of clocking so the synchronization of the signal, it can send it forward, OK? That is actually the speed that the information is going to go across, OK? And we're going to determine what that is, all right? So now, how do we do that? So now we have our, we, oh, well, let's, we haven't even connected it, right? We need a crossover serial cable, OK? I always pick the clock one because I know which one's going to be my clock, which is going to be this one. So that one's going to have the clock. That's going to be the DCE. And that one's going to be the DTE. Now, again, you may, you're only going to see this really in lab environments. All right, in the real world, you're going to be connected to your provider through a T1 connection or T3 or OC whatever line, OK? so. This is basically just for lab purposes, crossover serial connection. Your provider is the one that's going to be giving you the clocking, not you, OK? Unless you have some sort of internal or external CSU, DSU. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and provide the clocking here. Let's go inside that serial, serial zero, zero. So we're going to go ahead and go int or config T interface S0 slash 1 slash 0, enter. IP address, I know I didn't put one. Well, let's put uh, one that I normally use, 255.255.255, oops, .252, enter, clock rate, 4 million, which is the, my paycheck and the band, maximum bandwidth. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, well, it's the maximum, though, but it is my paycheck. No, sorry. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and put a bandwidth. OK? Bandwidth, uh, let's say 64. OK? And then we can turn on. Uh, no shot. OK. The bandwidth. You can put bandwidth until you're blue in the face, because bandwidth is a logical command. It's a variable that we use to manipulate. OK? Packet flow when we're using EIGRP or SPF. If we're to configure RIP, or static route, that bandwidth command doesn't mean squat. OK? The clock rate, though, on the other hand, does. OK? So again, bandwidth, logical, clock rate, actual. OK? But again, this will, the, your connection will limit the clock rate that you can put. All right? But one of these guys has to have the clock rate command. So let's copy that. And I'm going to stop doing that. Control Z, copy, run, start, enter, enter. Let's go to the other router. Now, I am not going to go ahead and configure all the basic administration on the other router. You guys have a handout, and you have this video on all the basic administration. You guys will type it. Practice makes perfect.
All right, so I'm just gonna go in here, just give it a name. I'm gonna go straight into the serial interface, okay? I'm gonna say no. Let's maximize it. And then enable, EN for short, config T or conf T, host name, R2, and then which serial interface is this? Show or do show. IP and brief. All right, it's S0. Okay, same thing. So int S0 slash 1 slash 0. IP address 10.1.1.6. 255, And you just put a no shut on there. All right, so you said change state to up. So do I show IP and brief again? You can see that now it's up down. Oh, now it's up up. Okay, packet trace is working a little slow. All right, up up. Okay, so now we have connections between here. Okay, and that's one of the things that you want to look at when you do the show IP and brief command. Show, show IP and brief. All right. You see that your fast ethernet, it's up, up. Your serial is up, up. Up, down, if that would have said down, that would have mean some sort of layer two issue, some sort of encapsulation or clocking error. Okay, so we've done pretty much a lot of the administration and everything. Now what's left, I'm gonna show you how to, co how to copy to a, a TFTP, okay? Now, we've done the TFTP in the past, but I'm just gonna show you one more time. This time we'll copy the flash as well. So you can see how both are done. All right, this will be the very last thing. Let's check our PowerPoint. Let's check our PowerPoint. All right, yeah, well, TFTP doesn't say uh, flash, but I'm going to show you how to do that. And just to make sure that we've been through all these already. And we have, and we have. Okay, awesome. Awesome, because my brain is kind of fried. All right, so let's copy our start first. And we don't have a TFTP server. So let's go ahead and put one out there. TFTP, just drag him out here, okay? Let's connect him. Straight through. We'll use the second port on the switch. All right? Oh, come on, really? Okay. Wow, this is really working slow. Hello. There you are, okay. Okay. All right, so let's configure him real quick. Desktop, IP configuration. So this is 192.168.1.2. Tab, tab. 192.168.1.254. Second available, last available for the gateway. Let's verify first that we have connectivity, but we'll do it from the router. All right, because that's what your book says, right? Make sure we can have connectivity with the P TFTP server. Ping, 192.168.1.2. Ethernet, so we have that ARP, okay, all right. So let's do now copy, start, TFTP, address of the remote host, 192.168.1.2, and we'll just leave the basic there, R1 config, or let's call it LAS config, all right, and then it gets copied. We'll check it in a second. Now let's do the iOS. Before you do the iOS, you got to know the name of the iOS, don't you? So you, you can do a show version, and you can try and find it in all those paragraphs that comes out, or you can just do show flash. Because that's where the iOS sits, right? And there it is. Yeah, I can't remember that name. Okay? So you're going to do copy, flash, TFTP. What's the file name? It's called copy and paste. Copy, paste. That's the source file name. What's the address of the remote host? 192.168.1.2. Are you gonna? I'm not gonna leave it the same because there's already an existing one there that has to for by default. I'm gonna give it the 
Laz iOS. And now it starts copying. Yeah, it's a little bit longer. Remember, this is an operating system that it's copying over to your TFTP file. All right? And it already finished. Thank God it's a simulator. All right? Let's go to the FT or TFTP server. All right? And in the config tab under TFTP first, let's see. Let's scroll down. Oh, there's the LAS config and there's the LAS iOS. Okay? So there you go. We've looked at the router prompts. Let's go back to our PowerPoint. That'll be good to wrap it up there. <laughs> All right. We've talked about the operating systems, the iOS or the XR. Again, the XR is something that you're not going to see really. No, you're not going to see it in the certification at all. All right. You will see it, obviously, when you get out in the real world, depending on where you work. But the iOS is what you're going to be working with in the cert and out there for the most part. How to get to the router, either through the console port or the Ethernet port, either SSHing or Telnet. The boot process, a very vague explanation the boot process going from ROM to flash, enemy RAM, and then to the actual RAM. Okay? We went, oh, look at this. We went through the different types of modes from user mode that all you do is basic monitoring to privilege mode, setting the clock and the terminal. And you can see you go from there to global configuration where you can configure everything else on the router. And then finally, uh, backing up, uh, well, viewing, we've been show run, show start. You can take out everything, and we did, or I did, a show start because I like to see that I have actually copied everything to the configuration. Okay? All right. That's it for this lecture. Next lecture, we're going to go ahead and uh, get a little bit deeper into the registry. Okay? And a couple more things, but so you just get ready. For the next lecture, make sure that if you did this lab, that you save your work. I'll see you in the next one.